Facebook, you're welcome. And um, we know that your life is going to be blessed tonight. You, are, you have not tuned in by accident, but by divine purposes of God. Before we delve into God's word today, I would like to remind you of this scripture from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God. It's profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction unto righteousness, that the man of God will be complete and thoroughly furnished or equipped unto every good work. Yes, another day and another opportunity for us to learn the living word of God. Today, I would like to speak on a subject that I've entitled The Blessing of Obedience. The Blessing of Obedience. I'd like today to read from Luke chapter 11, verse number 14. It's about Jesus Christ and his ministry. The Bible says, And he was casting out a demon, and it was mute. So it was, when the demon had gone out, that the mute spoke, and the multitudes marveled. But some of them said, He cast out demons by Beelzebub the ruler of the demons. Others testing him sought from him a sign from heaven. But he, knowing their thoughts, and said to them, every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation. And a house divided against a house falls. If Satan also is divided against himself, how will his kingdom stand? Because you say, I cast out demons by Beelzebub, and if I cast out demons by Beelzebub, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore, they will be your judges. But if I cast out demons with the finger of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. When a strong man fully armed, uh, God is on palace. His goods are in peace. But when a stronger man, than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes him from all his armor in which he trusted and divides his spoils. He who is not with me is against me, and he who does not gather with me scatters. Now, just go deeper now. It says, when all unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest, and finding none, he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself, and they entered and dwell there, and the last state of that man is worse than the first. I read, I read all this to you for a reason, but let me go to the, the actual verse there, the 
key scripture here. In verse 27, it says, And it happened as he spoke these things, that a certain woman from the crowd raised her voice and said to him, Blessed is the womb that bore you and the breast which nursed you. Oh, you see, because he did miracles, he, he, things were happening. This woman was mesmerized and um, just came with these words. But let's hear what Jesus said. He says, and he said, more than that, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. The woman said, blessed is the womb that bore you and breast which nursed you. So it's like me, Mary. Blessed is Mary. Blessed is Mary who gave birth to Jesus. Jesus said, no, I mean, I know she is blessed, but that is not. A blessed person is one <laughs> who hears the word of God and keep it. Say with me, more than that, blessed or blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. Those who hear the word of God and keep it. Those who hear the word of God and keep it. It's very important that we make this word very important to us. Um, it's very key in our walk with God. And I want us to be looking at this critically because, um, you know, sometimes we come up with all kinds of stuff, um, reason why we are blessed and we, we think we, we do this, we'll be blessed and we, we, we are we're mesmerized by the miracles and the, and the prophetic and things happening in the kingdom of God and all that. And, but to Jesus or to God, those who are blessed are potentially blessed. Or I would say those who will be blessed are those who hear the word of God and they keep them. And today, I want to talk about this word obedience. Obedience is, is a word that is not very popular because it's like um, a, a responsibility is laid on you. You have to do something. Obedience is simply saying yes to God. Or yes, or I will to the word of God. Or I will to God. Obedience is when instructions are given and you do it. Or you do them. And so here, Jesus was very particular about obedience. That is doing his will. Doing the will of God. Walking in the will of God. And so, it's very important that we understand this today. You see, blessed are those who hear the word of God and keep it. There's an example in the word of God that I want us to look at in Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, verse number 1. Where Peter was on his business as a fisherman. Peter was an experienced fisherman. But that night, he had toiled with his friends. His company had gone out there to work and they had caught nothing. So here, I read, he says, so it was at, as the multitude pressed about him to hear the word of God, that's Jesus, that he stood by the lake of Gennesaret and saw two boats standing by the lake. But the fishermen had gone from them and were washing their nets. Then he got into one of the boats, which was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the land. Here, Peter had finished his work for the day. Jesus Christ was preaching, and the crowd was following him. And he needed a place to stand to preach. In fact, he needed a boat to use as a platform to preach to the people. So he saw Simon and asked him to put his boat <laughs> from where it was now to the land to where so that it would be like a platform. And the Bible says, and he sat down and taught the multitudes from the boat. When he had stopped speaking, 
he said to Simon, now launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. You see, Peter had finished his work for the day and according to Peter, he had finished, he was tired, packed his boat. Jesus Christ came around preaching the word, needed a boat as a platform. He saw Peter, he said, bring your boat please. And then Peter actually, bring the boat, brought, brought the boat along and then Jesus stood on the boat and preached to the people. After that, Jesus gave Peter an instruction. He says, launch out into the deep and let down your net for a catch. I'm sure there had been a conversation then because uh, from there, I, I think um, uh, maybe Peter had complained or, or no, that maybe he couldn't catch any fish that night. <laughs> you know, so, so, so Peter said something, but Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let down the net. And I, I believe that Jesus, in, uh, Peter initially w looked at Jesus and said, you, you, you are a carpenter, a preacher. I am a fisherman. I know my job. I know my trade. I'm very skillful on my trade, and I know what to do. I've toiled all night, and I didn't catch anything. You know, according to fishermen, according to what they say is that you do a lot of catching in the night. Okay. So Peter went to do work at a time that he thought he would have good productivity. He went there and caught nothing. Jesus Christ, you are a carpenter. You have no knowledge about fishing. You were just a preacher. You came along and you are telling me, say Peter, that I should go and catch fish at this time of the day, daytime. I'm sure Peter was saying, my God, well, I saw you preaching today. I saw people giving their lives, but this one will not work. My science <laughs> tells me it's not time for fishing. Uh, this is not a time to do this. I'm tired. You, you have to keep your own business. If you are, you are, I, I knew you were a carpenter, and also I knew as a carpenter, because at, at this time, I don't think Peter was uh, uh, one of the disciples yet. Had not follow, it was not following Jesus yet. He says, I, I've known you as a carpenter. Go to your carpentry business, okay, and leave me alone. I know you preach as well. You know your business, you know your trade, and I know mine. It doesn't make sense to me. That is what happens to us many times. In our lives, in our walk with God, sometimes when it comes to when God wants to bless us, that sometimes we figure these things with our minds. That's how the world sees the, the church, the world sees God as Christ, as, uh, uh, you know, people who are not factual. I mean, with this thing happening, this pandemic, for example, the, the, the scientists are looking at the science, and, 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 and if you tell them that, oh, uh, let's pray about this. Is a prayer? Prayer will not solve this. It's a science. Okay? And, 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 and people who are like that, scientists and all those are, sometimes can be very pessimistic, you know. Master, we've told all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word. Nevertheless, at your word. Nevertheless, at your word. He says, yes, I, I know, I know you are a carpenter. I know you are a preacher. But I've seen things happening here. I've seen miracles happening here. Nevertheless, at your word, I will. I will. I will. I will. A key two words. I will. The key two words of obedience. These two key words are words that will bring blessing to you or blessings to you. I will. I will to the word of God. I will to God's instructions. I will. Anytime you do the will of God, you enter into an abundance of blessings. Anytime you key in into the will of God, you key in, key in into the blessings of God. The abundance of God is in obedience to his will and to his word. Nevertheless, I will let down the net. And when they had done this, they caught a great multitude of fish, and their net was breaking. 
So they signaled to their other partners in the other boats to come and help them. And they came and filled their boats so that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man. Or oh, it was too much for Peter. He says, For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsook all and followed him. I thought they would, after this miracle, they would just go into more business now. Wow, my God. But the Bible says they forsook all and followed him. Let's consider three reasons why obedience is critical to any successful Christian life. Number one, obeying God in small matters is an essential step in receiving God's greatest blessings. Obeying God in small matters. This one was not a small matter though. Although I would say maybe <laughs> something that it was, it was part of Peter's business. Jesus going in there, crowd following he needed a place to stand to preach to them. He asked Peter to bring his boat. He stood on the boat, preached to them. Many were saved. He told Peter, now go. So after he's used the boat of Peter, the same thing that he used to bless people to bring them to Christ, he used the same thing to be a blessing to Peter. So Peter's obedience, Peter's yielding to God's instructions and, and ob ob obedience to uh, uh, God's uh, asking, because Jesus asked him. Jesus came in to ask him for something, and he gave it to Jesus. And when he gave it to Jesus, he was blessed by that. His obedience, his love for it, his, his will, he, he, he willed his will to it. I mean, he obeyed. You see, it wasn't a small matter. Maybe Peter never thought it was going to happen that way. But that brought a tremendous blessing into his life. And i tell you something. We, our obedience is the key. You know what? No matter what we try to do in this life, as a believer, I'm telling you, you will never be successful if you live in disobedience. You will never be successful if you live in disobedience. It's obedience to the will of God, the obedi obedience to the word of God, the obedience to the instructions of God. It's a simple matter. This one, it doesn't matter whether you are the archbishop or you are, a, a, say, say, a simple person in the church. When we stand before God, all oh, our blessings come out of our obedience to God. God is not going to bless you because you are special to him. No, it's, it's a principle. He says, blessed are those who hear his word and keep them. So, I want to encourage you here that obedience in even small things, like even um, when to go out, where to do your shopping, where to live, um, how to raise kids, that's the major things, where to, where, uh, how to raise your kids, obedience in how to conduct your life for the day, your obedience in, uh, in everything in life, obedience in your relationships, your obedience in raising up your kids, uh, your obedience in God's work, your obedience in your daily work there, wherever you work, whatever you do, whatever you eat, your obedience even in, 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 in terms of what you eat, your obedience to the word of God, your obedience to God, being led by God every day, your heart of God, your heart of love, very important. So oh, your obedience, our obedience will bring blessings to us. Very important. The, the, the life of, there are so many people in the Bible. Abraham, Abraham, Abraham's life was blessed because of his obedience. Genesis chapter 22. He was ready to sacrifice his son, Isaac, to him, to God. And God blessed him. Now, the obedience of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel chapter 3. They refused to bow down to the God of the, 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 the Nebuchadnezzar. And they championed the word of God. They, they were on the Lord's side. They obeyed God. 
when they were thrown into the fiery furnace, Jesus appeared in there. The fourth man appeared. I believe the fourth man was, was the pre-appearance of Jesus in that burning furnace. Angel of the Lord. Your obedience will bring breakthrough to you. The reason why you have to obey God is that obedience or our obedience always benefits others. I'll tell you something. The people who were with Peter benefited from the abundance of fish that they caught that day. Because the two boats were filled and almost sinking. In fact, the, Peter's boat was sinking. They have to call the other partners, the other boats to come to help them. Hallelujah. So you see, the, the obedience of Peter brought also blessings to others who were around him. Jesus, the people who were following Jesus was blessed by using his boat. Peter's obedience made Jesus to use the boat to be a blessing to many people. And I believe many people gave their lives to God and followed Jesus. So that was a blessing to many people there. In fact, Peter's boat was a blessing to sinners out there. So your obedience, your obedience, you sometimes you're, you think your little obedience, you, your obedience is always a blessing to somebody else. It's, 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 it's a blessing to your family. Your obedience blesses others, your families, unbelievers, your work of obedience. So your obedience as a child of God, worshiping God every day, going out there, reaching out, preaching the word of God to people for, me, for them to be saved. It's not just the person people who will be saved. You may not know that the person who will be saved will be this person who will probably be, be saving your child one day. Maybe they, they, one day they will become a doctor where they will be the one that will take care of maybe you in the future. You will never know. So every obedience is not just a blessing to you but to others around as well. We saw that in the life of Peter. The third area is that when we obey God, we will never be disappointed. Peter said something that I like. After all this, and Jesus said to Simon, he says, no, uh, uh, before that, he says, when Peter saw it, he fell down, when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Depart from me, for I am a sinful man, O Lord. For he and all who were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. And so also were James, John, and all that. And then Jesus said to him, Do not be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. The blessing that came to Peter was a blessing that never disappointed him. Hallelujah. Your obedience will take you very far. Your obedience in everything that you do will take you very far. Your obedience in giving your finances will take you very far. Your obedience in serving God. Your obedience in day-to-day -day life. Your obedience in forgiving others. Your obedience in showing love to others. Your obedience in, in whatever you do in this life. As long as it is in the will of God, as you obey God, you'll be blessed. God will never overlook your labor of obedience. God will never overlook your labor of obedience. God will never overlook your labor of obedience. If you obey God's word, you're obeying him. If you walk in God's word, you're obeying him. Hallelujah. You don't see God physically, but you see his word. Your obedience into God's word. Your, your little obedience in God's word, very important. You know, sometimes um, uh, we, we don't know what to do in this life, and we feel that, um, you know, uh, 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 how do I even obey? You see, if you can't obey the word of God, that is written in front of you, it would be difficult for you to obey <laughs> other things or to hear even his voice. If you can't obey the word of God, that is written black and white. I wonder how you can even hear his voice. So, it's important. Everything that God wants to do in this life 
has already been put in place. So our obedience will be the key to unlock that thing to happen to us. Your destiny is already in place. Your success is already in place. What you need is your obedience. So your obedience will be the key that will unlock those doors of blessings in your life. There are no two ways about that. There are no ifs and, ifs and buts. Obedience. Peter obeyed. You know what? There are lots of people in the Bible. Mary says, so let it be unto me, according to you. Esther, they all obeyed. Lots of examples in the Bible that obedience was such a blessing to their lives. Or when they obeyed God, they were blessed. May your life receive the blessings of God this week and beyond. In everything, I know it sounds like it's very difficult, but just obey. Just trust and obey. There's no other way. Just trust and obey. Just obey God in the area of forgiveness. Obey God in the area of showing love to people. Obey God in the area of, of giving to people. Obey God in the area of serving Him. Obey God in your relationships, in your, in your family, in your marriage. Obey God. Obey God in raising up your kids. Obey God in taking care of your life. Obey God in every situation. Obey God at work. Obey God. Obedience. When Peter, he says, throw the net to the other side. So there's always the other side there that you don't know. That when you obey God in doing that, that will bring a blessing to your life. It's not everything that you, you think you know that you know. Go, Jesus, God is smarter than you. May the Lord bless your life as we obey him. May obedience be simple for us. Because that's the life that we need to live. In fact, faith is obe obedience to God's word. Faith is actually obeying God's word. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. you